Hey everyone, this is John Schneider with Fibro 3D Printing here at CES 2017 and I'm here in the Titan Robotics booth with Clay Guillory. You're the founder of Titan Robotics and behind us we have, well I'm just going to let you explain what we have behind us. We have a really large 3D printer here. So what's unique, unique about this large format 3D printer, it uses Autodesk NetFab, which is a new so software that's been developed using Project Azure technology. So that enables an infinite number of print heads essentially to work as a team to build one part very fast with high detail and high accuracy, which is very different from high flow, um, not so detailed parts. Right. So larger parts, but that still have a lot of detail versus the really big thick layers where you have a lot of filament through just one nozzle. Correct. So I see on here, right now you have five different, or I guess, yeah, five different objects all printing at the same time. And Project Azure, the, the ultimate goal of it is to be able to combine the five or multiple heads to do the same large part, sort of taking over different parts of each layer. So it, is that something that this machine's going to be able to do very soon? This machine is already capable of doing it. It okay. just takes a lot of calibration to get it right. Uh, gotcha. So the trade show, it's one of those things. But um, yeah, yeah. It, but you get the idea of what it what it can do, and we have a time lapse video online of it actually printing one gigantic part, uh, all all as a team and divvying up the jobs. So I see that this uses a different type of motion system than you see most three D printers using. Where most it's a pulley and belt system for moving the gantries along. This is using uh, ball screws. Is that correct? Yeah. So all of our machines are driven with ball screws. Uh, we have some one machine that has belts, but this is a uh, unique design in that it's fixed ball screw and offset gantry. So instead of having a rack and pinion, um, we decided to go with lead screws and save a little money, but the accuracy is still there. There's very little backlash. Uh, the offset gantries are so that the machines can get as close as possible together, and that's how the software is truly efficient. The closer the machines are, the better the prints are going to be, the faster they're going to print. And I also see that your frame is different than a lot of other 3D printers. Instead of extruded aluminum, uh, I mean, it looks like you have, well, I'll just let you explain it, I guess. Yeah, so every single one of our machines is uh, steel. Okay. It's completely made out of steel, and we have a CNC mill in-house, and we mill it perfectly flat, and then we attach rails. And so the rails are fixed to the steel, they're aligned, and then we build the machine from the steel frame. And we truly believe that without steel, there's no high accuracy capable. And in the long term, it's worth it. So, how big is the uh, how big is the bed on this current printer? Uh, this machine, I think, is uh, 72 by 30 by 20 inches build space, yes. and this is uh, an aluminum bed. It's quite thick, and uh, it has a vacuum plenum to keep the polycarb down. And then, as soon as the print is finished, you can remove the polycarbonate. Take, it, take your part off, to, no matter how big it is, and if it destroys the sheet or something goes wrong, you can always replace it, because it's very cheap. So that way you don't damage the aluminum, because I'm guessing that it's not a small thing to replace. No, no, the, the aluminum's not cheap, but uh, you can't really print directly to aluminum, and um, polycarb is a great bed surface. So is there any size limitation on this type of printer, or is this the only size printer you currently have? No. We have, so we have three different printers, and all of our models are fully customizable. So that's what we specialize in, is customized 3D printers. So every customer has a different specification, and we design and build the machine for those specs. Uh, this is totally modular, scalable. We can make as many bots on it as we want. Uh, right now it has five, but it can definitely have more in the future. So I'm guessing since each printer is custom, there's really no standard price for the uh, for the printers, correct? Correct. All right. So I guess how long have you guys been around? Uh, this is I'll be honest, the first I've heard of Titan Robotics. So it's really cool to see uh, see someone using uh, using this technology in a printer. Sure. Yeah. So we've been around two and a half years. I started Titan Robotics in my garage with a Craigslist ad and a, a Prusa i3 rep wrap, and uh, it's evolved into this. So we've got a manufacturing facility in Colorado. We do we keep all processes in house. So from welding to CNC machining to assembly to electronic to wiring to programming, all of that's done in Colorado at our shop. So where do you see yourselves going in 2017? Uh, bigger parts, even faster. Okay. Let's see how far we can push the technology of large format 3D printing and just just disrupt manufacturing everywhere. Very cool. Uh, I guess one last question. Right now, the filament diameter, is it 285 or 175? We use 285 in all of our machines. It's a lot more robust, and we can get higher flow rates. Um, well, to a point, to a point, we can get higher flow rates because we can push more um, 
it's more reliable. Let's leave it at that. We have a lot, a lot fewer jams, and on these large format machines, if you have a jam in the middle of a print, it's a nightmare. So we've done experiments with both, and three mil is much more reliable. Very cool. Well, Clay, I want to thank you again for taking the time to uh, to talk to me and to show off the machine. It, I don't know, this is this is a whole new level of uh, of interesting 3D printer to watch. It's very cool. Thank you. Thank you for your time. All right. I'm rolling.